Stage one, reactive survival, infant. Stage two, personal self, young child. Stage three, social self, adolescence, domesticated adult. Stage four is rational agency, self-direction. Stage five is self-authoring. That's full adult. You've achieved wisdom, but there's two more stages. Stage six is enlightenment. Stage seven is transcendence. Can you explain each or the interesting parts of each of these stages? And what's your sense why there are stages? This model is derived from a concept by the psychologist Robert Keegan. And he talks about the development of the self as a process that happens in principle by some kind of reverse engineering of a mind, where you gradually become aware of yourself and thereby build structure that allows you to interact deeper with the world and yourself. And I found myself using this model not so much as a developmental model. I'm not even sure if it's a very good developmental model because I saw my children not progressing exactly like that. And um, I also suspect that you don't go through these stages necessarily in succession. And it's not that you work through one stage and then you get into the next one. Sometimes you revisit them. Sometimes stuff is happening in parallel. But it's, I think, a useful framework to look at what's present in the structure of a person and how they interact with the world and how they relate to themselves. So uh, it's more like a philosophical framework that allows you to talk about how minds work. And at first, when we are born, we don't have a personal self yet, I think. Instead, we have an attentional self. And this attentional self is initially in the infant tasked with building a world model and also an initial model of the self. But mostly it's building a game engine in the brain that is tracking sensory data and uses it to explain it. And in some sense, you could compare it to a game engine like Minecraft or so, so colors and sounds. Um, people are all not physical objects. They are creation of our mind at a certain level of coarse graining. Models that are mathematical, that use uh, geometry and um, that uh, use manipulation of objects and so on to create scenes in which we can find ourselves and interact with them. So Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, and this personal self is something that is more or less created after the world is finished, after it's trained into the system, after it has been constructed. And this personal self is an agent that interacts with the outside world. And the outside world is not the world of quantum mechanics, the, not the physical universe, but it's the model that has been generated in our own mind. right? And this is us, and we experience ourselves interacting with that outside world mm -hmm. that is created inside of our own mind. And outside of ourself, there's feelings, and they, they presented our interface to this outside world. They pose problems to us. These feelings are basically attitudes that our mind is computing that tell us what's needed in the world, the things that we are drawn to, the things that we are afraid of. And we are tasked with solving this problem of satisfying the needs, avoiding the aversions, following on our inner commitments and so on, and uh, also modeling ourselves and building the next stage. So after uh, we have this personal self in stage two online, uh, many people form a social self. And this social self allows the individual to experience themselves as part of a group. It's basically this thing that when you are playing in a team, for instance, you don't notice yourself just as a single note that is reaching out into the world, but you're also looking down. You're looking down from this entire group and you see how this group is looking at this individual and everybody in the group is in some sense emulating this group spirit to some degree. And in this state, people are forming their opinions by assimilating them from this group mind. They basically gain the ability to act a little bit like a hive mind. But do you, are you also modeling the interaction of how opinions shapes and forms through the interaction of the individual nodes within the group? Yeah, it's basically the, the way in which people do it in a stage is that they experience what are the opinions of my environment. They experience the relationship that they have to their environment and uh, they resonate with people around them mm -hmm. and um, get moral opinions in this through this interaction, through um the way in which they relate to others. And at stage four, you basically understand that stuff is true and false independently of what other people believe. And you have agency over your own beliefs in that stage. You basically discover epistemology, the rules about determining what's true and false. So you, can, you start to learn how to think. Yes. I mean, at some level, you're always thinking, you are constructing things. And I believe that this ability to reason about your mental representation is what we mean by thinking. 
It's an intrinsically reflexive process that requires consciousness. Without consciousness, you cannot think. You can generate the content of feelings and so on outside of consciousness. It's very hard to be conscious of how your feelings emerge, at least in the early stages of development. But um, thoughts is something that you always control. Mm -hmm. At stage five, you discover how identity is constructed. Self-off, right? Realize that your values are not terminal, but they are instrumental to achieving a world that you like and aesthetics that you prefer. Yeah. And um, the more you understand this, the more you get agency over how your identity is constructed. So this stage, in parentheses, you put f- full adult, comma, wisdom. Why is this full adult? Why would you say this is full? And why is it wisdom? It does allow you to understand um, why other people have different identities from yours. Ah. And it allows you to understand that the difference between people who vote for different parties and might have very different opinions and different value systems is often the accident of where they are born and what happened after them to, uh, after that to them and what traits they got um, before they were born. And at some point you uh, realize a perspective where you understand that everybody could be you in a different timeline mm-hmm. if you just flip those bits. Stage six, um, at some point you can collapse the division between self, a uh, personal self and world generator again. And a lot of people get there via meditation or some of them get there via psychedelics, some of them by accident. And you suddenly notice that you are not actually a person, but you are a vessel that can create a person. And the person is still there. You observe that personal self, but you observe the personal self from the outside. Mm -hmm. And you notice it's a representation. And you might also notice that the world that is being created is a representation. If not, then you might experience that I am the universe. I am the thing that is creating everything. And of course, what you're creating is not quantum mechanics um, and the physical universe. What you're creating is this game engine Mm -hmm. that is updating the world and you're creating your valence, your feelings, your Uh, and um, all the people inside of that world, including the person that you identify with yourself in this world. Are you you creating the game engine or are you noticing the game engine? Um, You noticed how you're generating the game engine. And I mean, when you are dreaming at night, you can, uh, if you have a lucid dream, you can learn how to do this deliberately. And in principle, you can also do it during the day. And the reason why we don't uh, get to do this from the beginning and why we don't have agency of our feelings right away is because we would game it before they have the necessary amount of wisdom to uh, to deal with creating this dream that we are in. You don't, you, you don't want to get access to cheat codes too quickly. Otherwise, you won't enjoy So uh, stage uh, five is already pretty rare. And stage six is even more rare. You both basically find this mostly with advanced uh, Buddhist meditators and so on that uh, are dropping into the stage and can induce it at will and spend time in it. So stage five requires a good therapist. Stage six requires a good uh, Buddhist spiritual uh, it, leader. Yes, so it is, for instance, could be that is the right thing to do. But it's not that these uh, stages give you scores or levels uh, that you need to advance to. Uh, it's not that the next stage is better. Mm-hmm. You live your life in, in the mode that works best at any given moment. And when your mind decides that you should uh, have a different configuration, then it's building that configuration. And f- for many people, they uh, stay happily at stage three and experience themselves as part of groups. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with this. And for some people, this doesn't work and they're forced to build more agency over their uh, rational beliefs than this and construct their norms rationally. And so they go to this level. Mm-hmm. And um, stage seven is something that is more or less hypothetical. That would be the stage in which it's basically a transhumanist stage in which you understand how you work, in which the mind fully realizes how it's implemented and uh, can also, in principle, enter different modes in which it could be implemented. And that's a stage that, as, uh, as far as I understand, is not open to people yet. Oh, but it is possible through the process of technology. Yes, and who knows if there are biological agents um, that are working at different time scales than us that basically become aware of the way in which they're implemented on ecosystems and um, can change that implementation and have agency over how they're implemented in the world. 